Hello. Thank you for taking time to learn more about legislative priorities in gastrointestinal illness. My name is Cecile Rucker. I am the president and executive director for the International Foundation for Gastrointestinal Disorders, or IFFGD, which are the hosts for this year's advocacy event. There are many, many legislative priorities in Washington, many in healthcare, many that affect all sorts of patients with gastrointestinal illness. IFFGD has worked hard to shape a very specific legislative action plan for 2020. We are trying to focus on a few areas that we can really target to advocate for in Washington to help patients with chronic GI illness. What are IFFGD's legislative priorities for this year? Well, they come into three different buckets. There's medical research, there's patient access to treatments, and then there's education and awareness. We'll go through each of these categories today. In the area of medical research, IFFGD is focused on three things. One is a bill, HR 3396, the Functional Gastrointestinal and Motility Disorders Research Enhancement Act. This is a piece of legislation that has been supported by IFFGD for many years. We also are very supportive of NIH funding, especially in the area of gastrointestinal illness, and then also with goal for illness research funding. HR 3396 is explained in more detail in another video presentation by Philip Googlis, and you can find that in the advocacy training materials. But in short, HR 3396 is a budget neutral piece of legislation that seeks to bolster the research portfolio for functional and GI motility disorders. There are many other aspects of this bill, including raising awareness and also increased coordination of research amongst different government agencies. All of this is discussed by Mr. Googlis in his presentation on HR 3396. I hope that you will view that video as well. The National Institutes of Health is a major research mechanism within the US government. It funds quite a bit of research worldwide and is one of the top producers of knowledge in the area of medical research. We support NIH in hoping that we will be able to strengthen our understanding of the pathophysiology and mechanisms of all different chronic gastrointestinal illnesses. And when we talk to Congress, we encourage them to provide the NIH with $47 billion for fiscal year 2021, as proposed by the House in their recently approved appropriations bill. We also encourage Congress to ensure that appropriate funding increases are also given to the National Institutes of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases, or the NIDDK. The NIDDK is one of the many institutes of the National Institutes of Health whose focus is on digestive diseases as well as other disorders, but they are a very big supporter of research in the area of chronic GI illness. Medical research is also important for those who have suffered from Gulf War illness. Gulf War illness affects at least 25% of all veterans returning from the Gulf War. One of the aspects of Gulf War illness is gastrointestinal disruption. These veterans find that they have issues in their GI tract everywhere from GERD all the way to irritable bowel syndrome and that other GI illnesses that have yet to be fully researched and explained. When we talk to Congress, we ask them to continue to support the Department of Defense's Gulf War Illness Research Program and the Veteran Administration's Gulf War Research Program. Patient access to treatments is also very important these days in advocating in Congress. There are many, many ways that patients are being denied access to their treatments or having to cross stumbling blocks along the way or process through some red tape to be able to get the treatments that they need for their chronic GI illness. The three things that we are focused on here at IFFGD is step therapy, medical nutrition access, and non-medical switching. Fortunately, the first two of these, step therapy and medical nutrition, both have legislation that is in making its way through Congress now. 
for step therapy. Step therapy is called fail first protocol. What that means is if there is a specific drug that you are needing, that your doctor recommends that you try, sometimes your insurance company will deny that medication simply because you have not tried other medications that they feel you need to try first. This can happen when you switch insurance companies. For me, for example, I was on a drug that was working for my GI illness, and then I switched insurance companies. The new insurance company denied the medication that we knew worked for me because they wanted me to go through a step therapy protocol, which meant I had to try several over-the-counter remedies that I had tried previously that I knew didn't work for me, as well as some pharmacological options that I also already knew didn't work for me. But before they would cover the drug that I needed, I had to fail on each of these other drugs. This is called step therapy. Thankfully, there is a Safe Step Act that is currently making its way through the House of Representatives as well as the Senate. In the House, it's HR 2297, and in the Senate, it's 2546. We encourage our congressional representatives to support this bill so that we can help to establish guidelines for appealing the step therapy protocols. This will allow patients like myself and possibly you as well to be able to make an appeal during this process to show that I have already tried these medications previously and that they are, I know they don't work for me. So please approve the drug that I know that does. For medical nutrition, there are many people with chronic GI illnesses, with chronic illnesses altogether that need medical nutrition in order to help their condition or even to just stay alive. There are many, many different rules and regulations around these um, acceptance of insurance payments for these medical necessary treatments. Um, and there are different protocols and, and different um, guidelines. So there is a bill, it's in the House currently, and the Senate in, in the House, it is HR 2501. And in the Senate, it's 2546. And what this bill does is expands the coverage of medical nutrition <clears throat> with Medicare and Medicaid and other specified federal health care programs and some private insurance. These medical nutrition includes not only foods, but also vitamins, some amino acids, things that are deemed to be medically necessary for our patients. And we would like to our, our congressional offices to support this act, to be able to expand access to this very, very necessary medical nutrition for patients. The third aspect of patient access to treatments that IFFG is focused on is non-medical switching. Unfortunately, there is not a bill currently in either the House or the Senate. But let me tell you what it is, because we would like to encourage our representatives to understand more about what non-medical switching is so that they can look for ways that maybe they might be able to help us to help keep this from happening in the future. Non-medical switching is defined as the act of compelling a stable patient to change a medication for reasons other than their health and safety. What that means basically is if you are on a drug and you are stable on this drug, you have the same insurance company, but all of a sudden they decide that they want to switch you from the medication that you're taking to another medication without any consultation with your physician or with you. There are many reasons why insurance companies may do this. It could be a cheaper medication. It could be that they have um, negotiated with a third party to require this other medication first, but it is allowable by law for insurance companies to require you to switch medications without any physical scientific reasons to do so. Non-medical switching neglects the painstaking process that patients and physicians undergo, undergo to come to a preferred treatment method and often risks a patient's ability to effectively manage their disease. Please note that if you are a victim of non-medical switching and decide that you do not want to switch from your medication, most often you will be required to, bur to, pay, to bear the burden of the cost of the old medication that you wish to stay on completely and solely. And the insurance company will not cover any portion of that medication. 
overall, with patient access to treatments, we are urging Congress and the administration to address not only these, but all future tactics that may inhibit patients from being able to get the treatments that they need. Um, we realize that often when you go to Congress or a bill is passed to curb one thing that is happening in our society, then something else will come up. So we are asking Congress and the administration to not only address these access barriers that we have as patients, but to also proactively look for ways to keep these things from happening in the future. The third part of IFFGD's legislative agenda is about supporting education and raising awareness about GI conditions. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is an arm of the US government. What they do is they raise awareness and educate about disease states that are chronic and can be of harm to the US population. One of the areas that is not covered in their portfolio currently is functional GI motility disorders. And as hopefully we all know, patients with functional GI motility disorders often suffer for years before they get a diagnosis. I don't know if that's true with you, but for me, it was probably about seven or eight years before I received a diagnosis. And mainly that was because I was not aware that my disease even existed. There was no awareness around my disease state at that time. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention can help with educating the general public they also help educate physicians to help them to better diagnose diseases. What we are asking Congress is that they support the $3 million that has already been in, proposed in the House Appropriations Bill. We are hoping that this $3 million will be used to establish a very special education awareness program at the CDC for chronic disease education. So to recap, IFFGD's legislative priorities, we have medical research, patient access to treatment, and education and awareness. These priorities are explained in full detail in your registration packet that is available for download on IFFGD's training webpage. Please download this PDF and learn more about these priorities so that you can speak clearly and concisely with your congressional offices when you call them. And you can explain to them how many of these things may be affecting you personally or a loved one that you know. You do not have to talk with your congressional office about all of these priorities, only the ones that are most meaningful to you. If you have any questions at all about our legislative priorities and would like to speak to someone at IFFGD to learn more, you can email us at advocacy at IFFGD.org. That's advocacy at IFFGD.org. Thank you so much for taking time to learn about these legislative priorities for gastrointestinal illness. If you have any questions, please let us know. We are here to help you. And we thank you for joining us in this fight for increased research dollars, awareness and education, and also better patient access for all of us in the chronic gastrointestinal illness community.